Well, hey, welcome back to our second week of Focus 2020. Once again, I'm thrilled that you're with your life group or you're with somebody else just talking about some of these things we talk about on Sunday morning. And if you know uh, this Focus 2020, we're kind of doing a play on words where not only do we want to see better with 2020 vision for our physical eyesight, we realize that we can help each other stay more focused, see life more clearly together. And the second play on words with that is, as we head into the year 2020, what can we as a church do to really fulfill our mission? And that's reaching people with the living hope of Jesus. So uh, around that, we have three action words that we kind of use here at Hope. You've heard them, you've seen them uh, in the entryway at Hope, and that's invite, invest, and impact. And invite is simply inviting people into a relationship with Jesus. Invest is simply helping one another grow in that relationship. And impact means how can we come together because of our relationship? How can we come together and make an impact for God in this world? But what I want to talk about today is this invite. What I want you guys to talk about today is sharing our faith. Why does that seem to be so hard for us? And I want to look at one of Jesus' followers, his name was Matthew, and why it was so easy for him and yet so hard for us. So here's how the story goes in Matthew chapter 9. Jesus is walking along. He looks at, the, uh, at Matthew, who's a tax collector. And you know, tax collectors weren't held with much respect back then. They were skimming off the top. So they were actually, you know, disrespected. And Jesus said to Matthew, come and follow me. And Matthew was excited about that. So Matthew gets up, follows Jesus, but then he does something more. He invites Jesus to over for dinner and has this huge banquet for him and then invites some of his friends to come and meet Jesus. And I think it's rather exciting that Matthew is happy to do that. So the question I want to ask is why was Matthew happy to share his faith and why we many times, not all the time, but many times why we are not. And so uh, three questions for you to talk about in your life group or to talk about with your friend, all surrounding this this bigger question of why is it so hard to share my faith. And the first reason that I, I think Matthew was able to share his faith and we are not is because his memory was not short. Um, the question for us is, how short is my memory? Because Matthew, coming from his background, was so eager, was so ready to follow Jesus because Jesus is just walking by him and saying, Matthew, I want you to follow me. And so Matthew was just excited about that. What, Jesus, you want me? Even despite all my stuff, even despite where I was in life, you want me to follow you? And I think we forget that. I think the longer that we're in the church, the longer we hang out with other Christians, we forget where we were. Look with me in verse 12. When Jesus heard this, because by the way, and the Pharisees were ripping on Jesus because he was eating with Matthew's friends and they were what the Bible calls disreputable sinners. Jesus is hanging out with them and they're all upset about that. And Jesus says this, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. So he's talking to the religious people. Hey, religious people, you don't remember that you were sick. You don't remember that you need a doctor. Matthew knew that. His friends knew that. They were wanting to be with Jesus. And so very often I think we need to almost look back and remember where we were. And that helps us understand and look at our neighbors, our friends, our family members to understand where they are. Sometimes they're, they're just feeling hopeless and helpless. And I know they don't act like that. They're pursuing other things to, to fill their soul and fill their heart. But there are many people just sitting at a tax collector's booth, much like Matthew was, just waiting for somebody to invite them. So that's the first question. And I, I encourage you not to, you don't have to go into all kind of details about your past, but just talk about, hey, has my memory been too short? Second question I want you to think about and talk to each other was, when was the last time I showed mercy? And you can tell some stories around this. When was the last time we actually showed mercy to somebody else? Because here's what Jesus said. I want you to go and learn the meaning of the scripture. I want you to show mercy and not just offer sacrifices. In other words, I want your relationship with me not to just be this checklist of duty-filled things that you need to do, like go to church, go to a life group, you know, give some money, uh, uh, help somebody, um, help another organization, whatever it is. It's not just this religious duty, but actually to do that from a heart of mercy. And what I know in my life is very often uh, I fail to show mercy because I fail to see mercy in my own life. Because you know what happens. Whenever you experience some kindness or mercy, you're much more likely to pass it on. Like 
a cop doesn't give you a ticket. You're like, wow, that was merciful. Or uh, you, you end up going uh, to uh, a store or uh, some customer service agent, you know, upgrades you to something better that you didn't deserve. They were kind to you. They were nice to you. And you're like, wow, that was great. And you want to pass that on. And so here's the concept is the more that we recognize mercy in our own lives, the more we're able to pass it on. And I think Matthew, being so close to what happened to, to him with Jesus that day, Jesus showed mercy on him, said, hey, I want you to follow me. He had the audacity to think that if I were to invite my friends, maybe Jesus would show mercy to them too. We can't forget what God calls us and how he calls us to live in Micah chapter 6. Oh, people, the Lord has told you what is good. And this is what he requires of you to do what is right to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And I think, you know, uh, many times uh, if people find out we're uh, a Christian or we're active in church, they automatically think, oh, okay, this person knows what is right. And we're kind of known for our ability to communicate what's right and what's wrong. But is the church really known for its mercy? I mean, that speaks conviction to my own heart. Whether I'm interacting with some neighbor kids or I uh, experience some kind of, injustice in my life? Am I willing to extend mercy? And if I'm not, and if I don't have a heart of compassion to reach out to those who need mercy, then I need to go back and I need to say, okay, uh, where have I seen mercy in my life, the mercy of God in my life, so that I could pass that on to somebody else? And so that's the second question. Third question I want you to look at today as you talk about this with each other, and that's just, and I know it's kind of hard to talk about, but am I just going through the motions of my faith? Is my faith just regulated to something that I do on Sunday morning or something that I, you know, some category in my life? Um, am I just going through the motions? Because in verse 10, it said Matthew was so excited that he invited Jesus to come on over. He realized Jesus wanted to be with him and then in turn, he wanted to be with Jesus. It was a, a life-giving relationship that he wanted out of Jesus. And so that's the question when it comes to really sharing our faith. I think we're more apt to do it if we're just not going through the motions. Because I think we think of, sometimes we kind of fall into this thing of our faith is just simply going to church and our church has good programs for my kids or we have good music. Well, listen, if that's all we have to share with somebody is come to my church you know, because uh, the music is good and my kids, you know, are, are taken care of. That's inviting people to a program, and there's not a whole lot of passion around that. People are not looking for another program, not even for their kids. They're wanting something that's very real. They're wanting something that's very tangible. And so to be able to talk to people about a real relationship with Jesus is so much more important than just some program or some going through the motions. So ask yourself that question, am I just going through the motions with my faith and what can I do to, or how can we help each other dive deeper into our relationship with Jesus? And this is the last thing I want you to consider here uh, as you get together is how do, how do we share our faith? And I think it's more important than ever before in our day and age with all the stuff that it, that's happening in our world today, it's really important that we pay attention to what God says in his word about how we to share our faith. In Colossians chapter 4, verse 3, Paul says, uh, pray for us too that God will give us many opportunities. I think we need to be praying. God, help me see the opportunities you're giving me each and every day to just share my faith. And as Paul says, you know, in Colossians chapter 4, again, make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive. So it's not this thing where we need to beat up on people uh, for what they're doing in life and how they're living in life, but rather let us be gracious. Let us be attractive in our conversation. And so very simply, that might look like this. You know, someone at work or a neighbor sharing some hardship they're going through in life. And in turn, we can just simply say, you know, I may not know exactly what you're going through, but let me share with you my hope, my hope of what helps me get through this. See, that's what Matthew had, right? Matthew all of a sudden was given hope in following Jesus. And then in turn, he wanted to share that hope with others. And that's what God asks us to do, to do that in a gracious and attractive way. Peter talks about always being prepared to anyone, for anyone to make a defense for what you believe in. 
but but the defense is not about you know hey my religion is better than your religion the defense is all about sharing your hope and we're to do that in gentle ways and in respectful ways so i want to encourage you it's one of your questions to just talk about that from first peter chapter 3 verse 15 how can we share really a happy hope that we have in our lives how can we share that with other people with gentleness and with respect So once again, thank you so much for being willing to come together in your life group or with a friend just to talk about this stuff. And don't forget, after you go through the questions, take those action steps and talk about them. How can you pray for one another around this in sharing your faith? And what might be some practical things that you have learned in sharing your faith that you can share with someone else in your group or share with that friend? Thanks for being part of this initiative with us.